This episode brought to you by preparewithdronetech.com. These days, the future is still more uncertain than ever. That's why people who know what's coming are using today to prepare. You can't wait until the last moment. By then, it's too late. The most important thing you need is long-term storage emergency food. It stays fresh for up to 25 years and will be there when you need it. I strongly recommend My Patriot Supply, America's leader in self-reliance. They're the only source my family uses for emergency food planning. And right now, you can save $50 off a four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 plus calories a day. Calories give you the energy you need to survive. And save Saving $50 is impossible to pass up, but supplies are limited. So go to www.preparewithdronetech.com right now and stock up. That's preparewithdronetech.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Drone Tech, and today I'm going to tell you the disturbing story of Albion College in Michigan and their propaganda effort to demonize and, in fact, wrongly blame so-called colorless people for something done by a person of color. We've all seen this before many times. A student finds a racist message somewhere on campus. The school and the media instantly judge without having any idea who actually did it. And then eventually the perpetrator turns out to be a brown or black person or a microscope cover or a road work marking. But not before the damage has been done and the myths have taken on a life of their own. Well, here we have another one of those hate crime hoaxes perpetrated by a black student and now carried on by the college itself after the truth has already come out. So this all starts when a student discovers the messages and then posts them to this Facebook group called City Watch News Group. Then of course the school instantly judges this graffiti as part as some kind of overall racist assault on so-called people of color tweeting out quote we stand together with our black students alumni faculty staff and broader community members in condemning the recent acts of racism on campus. Hatred and injustice have no place at Albion and will not be tolerated. Now, notice this propaganda poster that they included and the fact it doesn't have any white arms doing any communist poses. This demonstrates who they've already judged as the enemy, the so-called people of no color. Now, their next tweet here is a real forehead slapper, seeing as how they've already made a judgment about who's guilty, saying, quote, we are currently investigating who is responsible for the racist graffiti in our residential buildings, and we will seek criminal charges against those involved. If they are Albion College students, they will also immediately be subject to student conduct process, including the potential suspension or expulsion. We cannot become a true community of belonging until everybody feels safe on campus. And it is our responsibility to continuously reaffirm our commitment to anti-racism through both words and actions. You know who might not feel safe on campus? The ones that you didn't include on your little communist uninclusive poster. Now, this entire event, of course, led to marches and calls to boycott the college because students say they don't feel safe. I mean, come on, really? Because someone wrote some graffiti on a wall these students don't feel safe? It really just shows how pussified and weak our school systems have made these kids. When I grew up, I was taught that sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words only have the power that you as a person give it. Fast forward a couple days and the college finds out that it was actually a black student. Does the college walk it back, apologize for rushing to judgment, or call out the fact that it was actually a black student? Of course not! Earlier today, we identified the individual responsible for the racist and anti-Semitic graffiti in Mitchell Towers. The student, who was acting alone, acknowledged their responsibility for these incidents. And you'll notice they don't mention if it was a man or a woman. They have been immediately removed from campus and placed on temporary suspension while we conduct a full investigation as part of our judicial student process. But didn't you just say that the student admitted that they did this? Why would they not just be uh, expelled from school immediately? But we know the acts of racism that have occurred this week are not about one particular person or one particular incident. Oh, of course not. We know that there is a significant history of racial pain and trauma on campus and we are taking action to repair our community but wh what action why why do you need to repair anything it was a hoax it wasn't real it's something that somebody did to make it seem like there was a real threat 
and the college seems to be playing along even though they know it was a hoax. We will change and heal together as a community because we are committed to doing the work. Unless you're the part of that community that happens to lack color. Andy No responded here and it's the most obvious response that I think any rational person would have. Given that it was assumed by your faculty and administration that this was a white supremacist attack, why didn't you inform the campus that the student suspect is black? Exactly. You found out that it was a black student and you're not going to mention that at all. You're going to carry on like it was a real event and leave the impression that non-existent white supremacist monsters did it. It's just like all these anti-Asian attacks that are carried out by black men, but then the activists and the media continue to blame white supremacy. Using Pepe Silva level mental gymnastics to rationalize it. So in summary, what we have here is essentially a black student who wanted to put a target on the white students using a hoax and the college is apparently choosing to play along. Their generalized statement just leaves it open for interpretation that a white student was behind it. The fact that these things keep happening and then on top of that you have the reactions of the media and the colleges themselves leaves me feeling that these so-called hoaxes are actually more like false flag attacks. Demand for race Racism is apparently outpacing the supply, so they need these false flags to keep the focus on an enemy, the people without color, and the fear high so that they can push their agenda. That's all I have for this one, folks. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Make sure to hit that notification bell, and I'll see you all next time.